Hi guys, welcome to part 8 of my 2023 Christmas Village full tutorial series. Celebration and revolution. Those are the two passwords for this part 8 of the series. Celebration, obviously, 8 parts, 2 months of work. And as I told you, I will reveal during this part what will be there in this spot here at 85 centimeters from the tree. Why 85? I don't know, but I like 85 centimeters. Be advised, very scary what will be there. So be prepared for that. Revolution. You may have noticed some big changes in the layout behind me. All done off camera because I worked in the worst condition possible. Very hot, I was uh, swearing, etc. So let's forget that. For the first time, that's why revolution, I will go with a 24 centimeter level. This one. And I will explain why. Now I have one more level here at 12 centimeters from the first level or second level. Then and some other levels here in the back and I will show you in details during the final recap, I think. But I will have more space to add more of my Lemax collection. You guys! So there, Lemax collection here. Sorry, Lemax collection, no Lemax collection. My awful English, guys. Here to some buildings, here to some buildings, up there. A surprise, I will tell you right now. And then I will also go even more up there with the uh, Santa Claus or North Pole little section on top of everything, very, very, very high there. Here. What's the reason of the layout there? And let me show you the layout from the other camera right now. Hi guys, from this view too. The reason of, haha, <laughs> and I have a stick. The reason of this layout here is obviously I want to add as much buildings from Lemax as I can. So this area here will be reserved to Lemax buildings. These two, then on the back also some other buildings. But on top of this, what will I be doing? Mysterious, secret, I don't know. Yes, I will reveal right now. Guys, maybe you remember what I said last season as maybe a warning or maybe as a, a, a prophecy, okay? And let me bring, sorry, I will go off camera, this little guy here, not that little, I know, the scriptorium. And at some point I've said, why not? starting from the scriptorium and then amplify that little section there. Let me go once again towards the other. Uh, okay, the scriptorium guys, here it comes again and let me have it right very roughly managed like that, okay? I know you aren't seeing anything from this camera here, but if I go towards the other camera, we'll surely notice that. So the scriptorium, guys, it's there. I will add some more giant building there. I modeled that scriptorium in about two, three weeks, I think, last season, and it is lonely there. So I've started uh, Monday night modeling, and I will reveal it right now, a giant, a monstrous cathedral, 
church, call it whatever you want. A scriptorium without a church is nothing. Ora et labora. Work and pray <laughs> was uh, the password uh, used by monks, by medieval monks. So I will need some place to work and I have it, the scriptorium, and then some place to pray, to ora. So I will add a giant, enormous church, cathedral. I will not do it by my hands with the styrofoam. I will use the same technique I used to model the uh, scriptorium. And I started modeling half of the first level of the cathedral, the church. And then I will divide them in many parts and I will 3D print them. Because that church, if done normally with styrofoam will take me at least 12 uh, weeks <laughs> to complete uh, doing only that entirely all my spare time and it's not the case so i will spend a lot of time modeling it because i want some very precise details some very beautiful windows some very pointy pointy this time pointy uh, roof and uh, maybe some rounded walls also but I haven't modeled them yet but I will surely go there so this will be very tall that's the reason of the 12 centimeters more centimeters and uh, uh, here I will not use uh, some stairs I will use something different that I will be doing in the next parts. I will do an elevator, not a, a skyscraper elevator, not a tall building, a modern elevator, a rudimental elevator modeled and then also printed in different parts. Uh, I know I'm using too much my 3D printers, but I need to do that. So I will bring some new technique also stairs and an elevator a very tall elevator it is here right now not yet on the paper or model it but right now let's continue with the stair with the giant stair there maybe another one sorry i've told too much but it this is also the part of the prototypes i will show you at least three or four new prototypes needed for the Viking village. Let's get to work with the stairs. Good, so much work to do. The stairs here need some improvements, the balusters, the end rail, and something more like that. Hey, it's not that awful like that. It's useless, but not that awful. Uh, off camera I simply carved a big arc in the middle there with my cutting table because it's simply a matter of cutting it is and it is very tedious and the result will be this one from your angle from from your point of view with the main uh, arc there with some twist obviously because with some twist but I will get to the centerpiece in some minutes. Let's talk about the uh, handrails and the baluster. I've already shown you in uh, part seven the use I will be doing of the uh, balustrade. And this one is simply pure normal part of my balusters. I will bring you my balusters. Voila. Those are the balusters I've developed for my uh, circus uh, uh, slash carnival section. Nine elements. I've simply removed the top and the bottom and took one single element from this baluster here. And so they are now divided in two different shapes. This one is the simple one cut on top and it is vertical 
normal orthogonal with the surface you put it on. So it is a little inclined like that with the steps. Those one are the same elements but cut with an angle of between 13 and 15 degrees. So if, when you place them on the stairs like that, they are normal, vertical, orthogonal with the steps. And that, that's what I want to achieve. Uh, I will use a new technique to glue them on the stairs because I can't use some super glue to toxic and it will not give a good result. Uh, I will, I can use uh, some uh, epoxy five minute glue, but it will have uh, too much um, extra surface and bumpy surface. Or I can use, like in this case, some double sided tape. Yes, useful, but they are mobile anyway. They, uh, they will be, um, they are mobile and they move and I don't like them. So I will use a new technique, mm, not very new to me, but maybe new to you. And I will show you in some seconds. I will remove this one because I don't want it anymore. I will bring some tweezers. Some tweezers, I will remove also those two. And I have a bunch of them prepared there, ready to be cleaned a little more. Oops, a mess, like always. And then I will remove this double-sided tape I used last time. Like that. But I will need to decide the distance between each. If I'm going with uh, one um, element for each step, it will be too, too, too much. Maybe one each two, or maybe one each three. I still don't know yet. I will try and go. Let me take my other glasses. So, uh, technique, new technique, yes. And I will need some sandpaper too, to clean them. Good guys, new technique right now to glue that together. Okay, I went just with this side. Here I have a little brush and some resin. This is the same resin I used to 3D print some elements, not filament like in this case, the white one is the filament and the gray one is the resin. The resin is liquid right now. This is water washable resin. But if I use the resin in combination with a UV lamp, these guys I will show you in the distance is a UV lamp, okay? If I project the UV lamp onto the a resin, it has the same principle of the 3D printer. It cure the resin. Let me do a test here. I will use a little of glue, uh, a little of resin all around the base and a very thin layer.
of the first element right there. And I will remove the resin, otherwise it will cure. And I will go like that. For some seconds. Enough. It is glued. Those one are very unstable. They move. This one is fixed there, okay? And it will not move anymore. I can't use this with everything, with every substance. It is a good way of gluing together some uh, PLA filament, like in this case, uh, some plastics together because it is a polymer, it is plastic that be cured like this. It's not possible to glue together styrofoam and uh, PLA or uh, resin together because the uh, styrofoam is porous and it will not get. So I will uh, use continue, uh, we continue to use uh, some uh, epoxy glue that I have here to glue uh, the rest together. Okay, so let me do another one. Okay, here I have some columns. Let me show you one of them. Columns made like that. Also those are pure Baroque design. I went with some uh, cube, then elevated the cube, then doing some fillets, and then add a little ball, a small ball on top of it. You, it's uh, it's like having head, a torso, and legs here. It resembles vaguely to a human figure. Okay, I wanted that. No legs, etc. No no arms. And I'm gonna use them to close like that okay so I will go ahead <laughs> It's starting to look almost, almost decent, okay? Uh, before doing the next one, I will continue with this one. Now, what will I need? I will need some end rails to complete this rail here. End rail. And rail and rail. Okay, I will not use some uh, printed parts, I will use some styrofoam. Okay, if I get the center of this circle here and the center of this circle here, I will get a radius of 12 centimeter and 13 centimeter for inside and outside and 20 and the 21 for the other uh, side so 12 13 20 21 i will do 
the exact same thing with some styrofoam. I will take my compass, uh, not compass, but like that. It's not a compass light you use. Voila. And voila. Then I will need a very big piece of styrofoam like this one big giant piece of styrofoam okay i don't have the space for everything but i will work anyway in here okay as i said i will need Boom! It will not go further than on the floor. I will need to do some circle. Okay, so the balusters are ready, the columns there is ready, ay, ay, ay. and then logic dictate that I would simply go this way and connect everything together. like that but no i will go further especially let me change my glasses especially with this little beast here i have printed this little nothing here and i've used the same technique to glue together some pieces that were detaching, but once painted, it will disappear. I will go with this piece here 
inside
Okay, guys, I think I will leave the rest for next part. And this is a good step, almost complete. Something, some little adjustments here and there, and then some big work of painting, maybe adding some bricks, but I don't think so. I will leave it like it, like it is. And let's do something, something else. else. Prototype. That's what I've said some hours ago. This is not a prototype. This is my standard street lamp. Uh, I made uh, modifying uh, a street lamp for uh, doll houses. But yeah, as they are too small, I went with this one that is almost 12 centimeters tall. Two big washers uh, as a base uh, to stabilize everything and an LED, pure white LED inside. My fishing village, my Viking fishing village need lamps, need street lamps, obviously. This one, yes, maybe I could use this one, but it is too modern for a fishing village, Viking fishing village that is somehow living a little into the past compared to the, uh, the rest of my village. So I decided to model something different. One part, two part, three part, four parts. Obviously, it needs to be assembled. I wanted something different. Once assembled, this will get the following aspect, like this. Let me approach the camera. <clears throat> Those are <clears throat> left and right part of, a old, of an old street lamp. The base would be some stones, then some wood as a vertical and horizontal support, some metal as Vikings do to support the lantern. That is, this one is the lantern that I've printed in PETG because it is transparent. So I will paint it somehow um, that it will reflect the light. I used this material previously last season and even before. Um, inside it is empty, not empty, it has some grooves inside to let some wires pass through. I don't even know if this works and then some cap for the, for the lantern there. I don't even know if it will work or if it it is suitable, etc, etc. Let me assemble this. This is a prototype, as I said. First time I will use this and it will be this once assembled. Let's do some wiring. Let's prepare uh, some of uh, the, an LED. Uh, I will use those T lamps here. And I will use the LED that is inside. Let me switch on my soldering station because I will need the soldering station.
So I was saying uh, a prototype, obviously, uh, model number two, version number two. I will definitely have to enlarge this groove here because otherwise the wires, the standard wire won't fit in the little groove I made. They would have fitted those wires here, but they are too small for this connector here that I will be using. Uh, now this is how the new uh, lamp post for the Viking village will be, I think. Uh, I still need to test it. Let me just add a little of mask tape on the base in order to those uh, uh, wires here I could like that if uh, I want to go vertical with the wires digging a hole under the post and then going towards I don't know where but if I want to have the wires going somewhere else and obviously the mask tape won't glue on the PLA. It is a particular plastic that won't glue, but it stand. Let's check if it works. Oops. Battery, positive and negative. Yeah! It works, guys. I don't know if you can see it, but it works. And the light, it, it works. I think it, it has the right eight. Uh, I will go differently with this tape here. Uh, it stands alone without having a necessity of uh, wash on the base because it has a white base maybe not enough tall but this is a brazier or some type of lamp that will need access from a lower position so i think that this prototype is good i will see what will be the effect once uh, i've uh, placed this on the uh, on the layout i will show you let's do something more now guys i have a little styrofoam bunches of pieces of styrofoam here strange form uh, you know that as i told you in my intro that i have a new level i wanted to get access to this new level in some strange way laterally etc i will need a stair okay you have just seen me doing some meticulous uh, giant uh, stair this is some more traditional stair. It's not like the previous one that I went vertically. This I will go horizontally. And this will be shaped like this. And let's get these together. And I will go up 12 centimeters with a depth of 26 centimeters. And the steps will be nine millimeters thick, except the first one that will be 1.3 millimeters, because nine, nine millimeter, the thickness of these pieces of styrofoam, this panel of styrofoam is not multiple, is not multiple of 12. 12 is not divisible by uh, 0 0.9. So I will go this way, the 26, like this.
12 centimeters. A very strange uh, stairs there, never done like this before, very particular, getting access to something without the balusters for now. Maybe I will add uh, some balusters at some point, uh, two centimeters depth, four centimeters wide stair. I think it's time for the final recap. Final recap of part 8 of the 2023 series and I'm gonna start from those prototypes there The new rowing boats or fishing boats if you prefer. I know that you are waiting for that Ta -da! <laughs> He is there because he is he but it's not time yet. I know I am a very awful person right now and I also know that uh, I already have uh, two giant boats there plus a wreck but those are uh, cruising boats commercial boats but this is a fishing village a viking fishing village and people need fishing boats small boats rowing boats and those are the new prototypes the white ones have been printed with the FDM printer and the grey one with the resin printer. This is an exception. The skiff boat. This is a skiff boat. I've modeled it with some uh, fish nets and then some bags and then some ropes, some oars. And the sail there was too complicated to print to, to, with the FDM printer. It will have required a so many supports so I went with the uh, uh, resin printer for that and this is how I model all are of wood uh, boats but all are flat on the bottom side generally boats are not like that they are like that modeled to um, to cut the the waves but for my village for the layout reason i modeled them flat on the on the bottom side skip boat with the oars the rope as i said this is a giant boat a rowing boat or fishing boat compared to the other ones those one are modern classic uh, rowing boats wooden boats with uh, three oars two for rowing and one for direction like that Okay, like that and I still need to decide where to place them maybe I can also go like that towards the beach like that and this is another way of approaching those are the same both but printed with two different printers those one are more ancient boats are more Viking shaped boats you can see that the profile is absolutely Viking with the front and the back uh, pointy uh, with uh, some design that remember this little house there because this is pure Viking fishing boats expedition boat not for the distance because they lack the sails because Viking uh, boats have the sails for very long uh, shipping expedition and this is for two people and this is for three people and also this one the same one a little longer but very very old design old fashioned remembrance of the past because this is a fishing village maybe i will go this way there or maybe i can also go this way here with this one like that or even go further with the skiff like that or maybe like even like that okay and i will multiply them i don't know which one to choose maybe i will do a lot more of uh, uh, every uh, single one of uh, them the another prototype guys the uh, the post lamp the street lamp call it whatever you want let me remove this building for the purpose and let me have the camera fixed in this position let me have the camera positioned like that 
Uh, I don't know if you will see anything. Maybe I will go with ISO automatic and and also the shutter towards the auto shutter. Okay, and I will try to shut off all the lights to see what is the difference with this lamp there. Hope you can see something, I don't know. Let me check the camera. Yes, this is the camera and this is the effect in pure dark not even a single light switched on and it is doing his work of illuminating these are it's not that powerful as my standard um, street lamps but this is a viking village uh, still plunged into the past and this is some brazier lamp or something like that on some gas littered uh, lamp post and the area is big enough maybe I will go even okay the area illuminated is big and it is the only light on the village just remember that also the buildings have lights so it will bring so much more light to them. and now the camera is set for pure uh, dark so it's flashing the LED is flashing towards the, the camera this is the effect I think I will go not tall because the the other lamps have the the lantern here on top of there so the uh, radius of illuminating is um, much more uh, bigger but this is needed to be accessed by humans by people uh, at uh, very frequently so this is the new street lamps i will multiply them this is a prototype but i will continue making them let's switch on the light let me go once again not towards the automatic settings for let me go one three hundred and uh, ISO towards 320 ISO like it was before and the shutter to one uh, 100 okay so this is I was here let me do a strange thing let me take the camera for a moment and it is still there and let me remove this little guy here and let me have it there yes 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 why i'm doing that because here i still have a free empty space and use it a space a waste of space even on the water I will add some more platforms there because I will go with some crazy things there. Never seen before on any village, as I can remember, not mines, not even uh, the cast off from Netherlands. And I will go with some strange, uh, crazy scene on top of here connected to the rest maybe in three or four parts i will be able to show you something i will need to model so much things S guys lemax is lacking seated people it's almost impossible to find on the market a seated people from lemax or any other uh christmas village producer it's a it's it's a pity a village not just it, it just not need only uh, standing figurines it also needs a seated figurines and i decided to model a, a wild bunch of them but it will take me a lot of time such as why no uh, figurines in the rowing boats because i don't have them not from lemax not yet from myself yet but this will change especially with I, I can't I can't see so 
not yet let's continue towards the rest of the uh, layout and let me go crazy let me go crazy and oh by the way the stage for the poor's performers has been completely painted now with the same colors as before and it is ready to uh, and it is waiting for some performers uh, let me go that way maybe i'm too far from the stairs but this is the effect the result from the distance of what i done <laughs> up until now still need to be painted and some more work on it because believe me once painted it will be improved by 20 percent right now with some white and some yellowish it's nothing pure nothing of nothing let me go closer to the stairs and just hope not to make a mess closer yes you can see now the details maybe i can rotate a little like that I don't know if you can see it. Yes, uh, right now it's a very detailed position with the arc. It still miss the big door on the back side there that I will do for a next time. But this is my vision of uh, Baroque arcs and etc. With the arcs, adding the arcs the columns shaped as a human, as a people, uh, with uh, no legs and no arms, but with a uh, body and etc. And the balusters right like that and the end rails still need to be painted. Uh, you have seen all the details when I was doing them, but this is, and I managed to get a part of the column, so the last columns, uh, onto the ferry wheel uh, level onto the ferry wheel stage there so it gives continuity to the to the stairs okay and i will paint them by next time the columns etc this is my vision maybe you are a you will hate it and i still need to apply some base to it etc 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 just let me know if you hate them. I will not remove it. I will try to modify it, but at least I will know you hate that um, that stairs. Not yet. I will do it by last. Let me go towards the other stairs I've made, quickly made, and still miss the balusters, but I will get them. Those stairs there that will allow people to get access from this level here to this level here and also this level here in some way because I will manage something. So there I will have Lemax buildings, a big space for Lemax buildings. Here too, Lemax buildings. Here too, maybe also some other things up the level for Santa levels and then there this is remembrance of the past as i told you the scriptorium there for ora at labora not just working in the scriptorium but also a place of worship for those little monks this will be still in the um set set in the same uh, um, times as I told you last season with the uh, name of the rose uh, novel, etc. Medieval times. But this is what I intend as details. Please just look at how mad I am because I modeled this chain there and then two types of mosaic, one here and 
I know my fingers are very, 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 very dirty as always by the end of this part. And another mosaic, I don't know if you can see it right there. And this will be a hell to paint. And this is absolutely gothic, guys. I still haven't modeled the doors, but I will get there. This is the first part. This is the first level. I will go up and then I will go there. The only thing I know for now, I, I, I only have modeled this part and the ones that is connected to it there. And then the rest is are still to be modeled. Uh, Gothic as medieval times were, etc. Pointy arcs, etc. The only thing I know is that I will go no more than this width there, or maybe a little more, with an entire section, plenty of monks and plenty of people getting to be to visit the abbeys, the church, etc., the scriptoniums with the elevator that will go up there in some ways. Still isolated from the present, from the past and from the future, working on their own things, working on divulgating the knowledge of humanity, but with much more things on there. And this stair here, this rounded stair here, need some baluster at some points, but I still don't know how to get them. But you know that each level needs to get access with some stairs. Now, let me position the camera, be advised, it will be a very violent vision what you will get in just some seconds. Let me position the camera. In this way, a little closer maybe. Be advised. Very scary, very dangerous. And I will explain everything. Maybe a very dramatic music should start playing right now. Let me go. Let me go. It's time, guys. Please don't cry. And let's go. This way, guys. Ta -da! Ta -da -da! Ladies and gentlemen, the only scary Anubis. I know what you are thinking right now. Why Anubis? Why such a furious god? Why the god of the underworld? Why an Egyptian god? An Egyptian god, it's obvious because of the Sphinx, of the pyramid, of the obelisk there, but not a pyramid as you have maybe thought there. And guys, this is the really depicted Anubis, the one with just the head of a jackal, nothing else, not the legs of a jackal. I hate the ones who depicted. This is the real representation of Anubis as it is depicted in each and single one of the hieroglyphs, with just the head of a jackal. And even from the distance, guys, even from the downside, and then I will go closer. It is scary. The scary Anubi there. It will protect my village. And don't think as Anubis are the naval god. It is the protector of the underworld. It will, it, it helped souls of very important people to go to the afterlife, to go to the other life, the life after the death. I know I'm blasphemed right now, but I'm talking about Egyptian uh, mythology there, Egyptian gods, and this is absolutely, absolutely my preferred Egyptian god, and I will explain to you in some minutes why. I've detailed as much as possible it. Let me approach. Anubis, maybe I will 
take it in some other place and I will go there guys so all around this is my vision of Anubis a human with a jackal head please the le those are not uh, legs though uh, not, not animal legs those are human legs okay and not with shoes as Egyptian did not, didn't have shoes look at the eyes I've spent half an hour painting them they are blue and shining and frightening eyes like that and I modeled the head a little towards the left as it is it was judging everyone and single one and the cloak here this is the cloak because even Anubis was embalmed after uh, his death because even Anubis has that it has uh, an address it has uh, some stones and pure bronze and then the blue eyes there shiny blue eyes and then a giant stone there and some red stones and the rest is a pure bronze paint perfect body for the time i think i hope so and please don't look at this as a cape as a superhero even if i thought maybe you have uh, misinterpreted uh, that as a cape as a superhero but anubis could be judged as uh, could be considered a very 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 powerful superhero this is the was stuff spelled was wrote u a s was u a s stuff Pro, uh, you can spell it was was okay whatever you want uh head there that is somehow some sort of an ibis but it is not an ibis it's maybe because it is supposed to be an Egyptian phoenix, uh, an extinct bird from uh, Egyptian times. And then at the opposite corner there, at 90 degrees, rotated some U-shaped thing. This can have three functions. First one, power, because every single one possessed the stuff was a power. Then protection because Egypt was full of snakes of very dangerous snakes and these can be used to trap snakes but another interpretation is also that the was staff was used to by powerful people to draw circle and you know that maybe yes maybe no but I will just tell you that uh, Egyptian architecture was based on circles just remember the pyramids of Giza placed in some sort of uh, circle and if you put this against a pole a vertical pole there a vertical staff a vertical piece of wood in the sand or uh, any other things the head here can be used to draw a circle as a, a, a compass will do uh, for an inner circle for an outer circle there very powerful stuff used there in the other hand the ank cross symbol of life symbol of purity symbol of afterlife and I think then some stones because it worked on some ruins and then a base there, etc. But I can't imagine a better way to represent, to depict Anubis that was also a warrior. That's why it has some armor on the here and there. But it is here. I'll just look once again to his eyes, guys just to protect my village and to protect everyone and don't maybe you are hating me right now for having used 
Anubis as the only God that will be present. And maybe you are judging me as blaspheme as I, I will ever be. But just remember that I will also have some scriptorium and the big church there. And you also know that I'm not a religion person, but I like to know every single religion in the world, present, past and future. I don't pray. Uh, I don't believe, sorry, I am not a believer, but I am a, a person who likes to study uh, everything, also religions, to understand religions, present and past. This is not a religion, this is uh, maybe mythology, because it is too ancient, but why not Anubis? And this is, we'll explain, all is the fault all is due to one single people. Tim Powers, a novelist, a modern novelist, not a Victorian era novelist, that in around 1985 or 1986, I don't remember correctly right now, he wrote a marvelous, fantastic, gigantic, stratospheric novel, book, the Anubis Gates or Anubis Gates and it's set in modern times for just a brief introduction then everyone is projected into Victorian era London very dangerous uh, with a very astonishing search a quest etc it's pure pure Victorian era representation, the Anubis Gates, and this is an homage, an homage to Tim Powers and that fantastic book. Uh, I've read it at least five times, if I remember correctly. It's not the book I've read the most, because it is uh, uh, Pillars of the Earth uh, from Ken Follett that I've read at least 10 times. The book is uh, losing, even losing the pages before I switch it to modern technology, to Kindle and the tablet, etc. But if you haven't, please listen to this madman here that uses Anubis as the protector of his village. Please do yourself a, fa a very wonderful favor and if you haven't read the Anubis Gates from Tim Powers. Anubis is among us. Anubis as a protector of my 2023 Christmas village. I know that many, 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 if not all of you will hate me from now on for having chosen Anubis even taller than Poseidon from last season, more powerful, more frightening than Poseidon. But I had to do it because I'm crazy and I will go crazier and crazier, unbelievably crazier from now on. It's my way of creating Christmas villages. It can kill you in a fraction of a second with his look, but who cares? It will guide you in the afterlife towards a better life. From the other camera, guys, but you have seen everything multiple times already. From this camera here, guys, that is Anubis, guys. Don't be scared. Anubis, my protector. And the stairs. Directly from the stairs, you can get access to Anubis. Judge me. I know you are judging me, but I'm here to be judged by you, by, by the future of humanity. Sorry, I'm so dumb. I'm under the influence of the mighty, the powerful Anubis, helped by... I, I, will, I, will shut. I will shut my mouth right now. The boats are there, the prototype, I will multiply the post lamp, I will do so much things, I will complete, I think, with part 9, the big stairs, I will try to find the balusters from, for my new small rounded standard stereotyped stair, just beside Anubis, Anubis guys, Anubis, please, don't forget to subscribe, 
comment and give a big thumbs up. Thank you for watching. Thank you for begging. You know my absolutely awful English. And I don't know this time. And I will not say, but yes, I will say it anyway. See you next time for part nine. Bye, guys.